Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for sticking out the, the rain and coming out here and being true patriots. Like Ken said, my name is Maria Espinoza. I'm co-founder and national director of the Remembrance Project. Before I talk about the Remembrance Project, however, I have a question for all of you. And after this question, I'm going to give you the microphone because we have a big Texas message to send and share before we leave here today. My question to you is, how many of you are the same as you were five years ago? I, I see him shaking no, mm -mm. I know I've changed. I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I never thought I'd be up here helping, giving a helping hand and to what I call, and as a Texan might say, country business. And you are not the same people as you were five years ago. Who are you now? How many different hats are you wearing? We, my friends, are going through a, an American metamorphosis with the rule book called the U.S. Constitution and that special compass called the Bible. We are becoming warriors, championing all that is American and all that stands for American exceptionalism. You are technology gurus. You are website designers. You are wall posting, tweeting, Mac using, iPhone syncing, Bluetooth wearing Texans, handling country business. In fact, at this point, I think it'd be easier for me to ask who are you not and what can you not do? So this is where you get the microphone. Remember, you're outdoors. Pretend you're sitting in your living room yelling at the TV. You don't have a dog to startle or a baby to wake up, so don't worry about that. Consider this a good stress reliever. I want you to send a message to those who are trying to take away our freedoms, our liberties, who are trying to take down America and take down Texas. On the count of three, I want to hear from you nice and loud, that famous Texas message. Don't mess with Texas, you know that one. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. I like that, great. Woohoo! Oh, hey, great, fantastic guys. Now let's talk about the Remembrance Project. And this just tears my heart. This is what we call the Stone Life's Quilt here behind me. And we just brought, my husband and I, Tim, just brought a few of these Stone Life's Quilt banners with us. Thank you, all of you, for holding the quilts. Thank you so much. The Remembrance Project honors and remembers Americans who have been killed by illegal aliens. Americans who would otherwise most likely be here today supporting their families or helping take care of a parent in their later years or getting their college education, some working to protect our country, our communities, others as doctors, teachers, or engineers. But for the lack of protection of our country's borders, our family members, our friends, have had their lives stolen by lawless trespassers who now live in our communities. Sadly, these stories are usually short-lived and they almost always remain local, with very few exceptions. So we have communities all over the country where for the most part, these American tragedies remain small local news. And since these stories, by and large, remain local, we, the American people, 
have no idea, no idea at all, that this is an epidemic of killings taking place. And it is affecting us in ways in which families, our nation, can never, ever recover. And so what we have created is a Stolen Lives quilt made up of many, many panels so that we, the people, can spread the news of our losses to every city and in every state until they all understand. And so why the quilt? And why has it shown itself to be such a powerful image? Why is it more powerful than words? Well, let's face it, we're constantly bombarded with TV news or we read something in the newspaper, we come across tragic crimes on the web. Those are words that come and go with us. These words do not stay with us very long and it's only human nature. We continue our lives mostly unaffected. The tragedy is quickly forgotten by all except for those who are closest to the victims, their family and close friends. And so we have a very difficult situation that the American people don't even know what is going on. And this is why the quilt is so important a message. By God's grace and through the hard work of concerned Americans all across the country, the quilt is spreading the word in, way, in a way that it is not just by words, but as a lasting visual memorial to our fellow Americans, our loved ones. And yes, a visual reminder with faces, names, and lives connected with each and every one of our loved ones who have been killed. And this message can be taken anywhere. You can see there are three stolen lives on each banner. We've taken the message of our loved ones to state capitals in over 20 states during our sto Stolen Lives Quilt Tour. We've taken them to city halls. We've taken them to illegal alien rallies. We've taken them to vigils and rallies all across America. We were in Los Angeles just a few weeks ago where the Jamil Shaw family held the Grassroots Remembrance Day. Jamil Shaw was a 17-year-old student athlete, good student, good athlete. Stanford and Rutgers were looking at a scholarship for him. His family did everything right. His mother was serving in Iraq, protecting our country when our country was not protecting her son. We also memorialized Reuben Morphine, 10 year old little boy walking home with his friends. An illegal gang member grabbed Reuben and asked him who he pledged his allegiance to, which gang did he belong to. And he said, none, I'm an American. And for that, little Reuben was shot in the head. Drew Rosenberg's son, son of Don Rosenberg, 23-year-old law student, hit by a drunk driver three times. The first time he was run over, Drew got up. The second time he was run over, he was still moving, but not the third time. The nightmare that this family is going through in the court system is despicable. We also took the Stolen Lives quilt to our elected officials in Washington, D.C. after asking just simply for our laws to be upheld in order to protect our children. Last year, Josh Wilkerson's mother and I made several visits to these representatives asking just that for our laws to be upheld. She told her tragic story about Joshua, 18-year-old Joshua from Paraland, Texas, a classmate, brutally beat and tortured, strangling Joshua, setting his body on fire. Not 10 days before, 
was that man who killed him was in front of a judge, in front of a judge and illegally in our country. Well, what we have found is this. Americans, and yes, even our legislators, react much differently when they see the faces and the names of those of family members who have been killed by illegal aliens through no fault of their own, who are permanently separated from their families. All of these killings were preventable. And we believe that it is through a united front where Americans everywhere honor and remember and in solidarity take the faces and memories of our fellow Americans forward so that they are not forgotten. And this is the message of the quilt that we must not forget. Our promise to you is that we will do all we can to spread this message. We will do all we can to make sure America does not forget. I'm here today not only to share the Remembrance Project and the sadness of the tragedies of our fellow Americans are, with, are suffering, but in hope that we will find the answer. And the answer is partly in the quilt. The answer is in sharing our fellow Americans' tragedies. The answer is partly in we, the people, rising up in defense of our families. And the solution is in Americans becoming more aware and less tolerant of a lawlessness and of a border that is open to anyone at any time, regardless of their intention to come across the border and settle within our sacred land, our communities, to the detriment of all Americans. Um, to the detriment of all American families, stealing from us our most valued possessions, our families, our loved ones, our children. And to those of you who are suffering terribly today, and for those who will suffer in the future, we owe you our prayers, our determination, and our resolve. So I want to thank you once again and to offer you hope that we, as a people, will continue to fight the oppression of this invasion and to stand up against a soulless government that ignores our children and that we will one day bring back national security so that our children and our children's children will once again be free to realize their God-given rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank you and God bless you. I have one more note, Ken, and uh, this is one of my hats as well, Texas Border Volunteer hat, cap, and I'd like to publicly thank Mike and Linda Vickers, Jim, Mark, Frank, Polcat, and all the members at the Texas Border Volunteers for all they do to help keep Texas and America safe. Having traveled to the Arizona border and participated in a night watch in Falfurrias, Texas, with the Texas Border Volunteers, I can tell you that the border is not secure. Big surprise, right? The note from the Texas Border Volunteers says, ladies and gentlemen, the Texas Board of Volunteers would like to be with you today. However, we are watching the border tonight because our government has failed to enforce the laws of the land. 
We send our best wishes for a successful patriotic rally. And as you celebrate at this event, we ask for you to please keep the Texas Border Volunteers, the brave members of the B Border Patrol, and other law enforcement elements in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you, your loyal Texas Border Volunteers. God bless Texas. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, girls. Thank you.